Hi guys, welcome to this module. In this module we're going to look at how to save a baseline and how to create reports. So first of all, just to recap where we are with this project, here's our task list and here is our resource list. So most of the resource, these resources have been added and allocated to these tasks. What I'm going to do is change this table to the cost table so that we can see the cost of this project, which is £2,134 at the moment. The baseline column is blank. We are ready to save our baseline, so that column will shortly be populated. To save a baseline, you go to the Projects tab, Set Baseline, and then Set Baseline. And then you have the option to save a baseline. You have 11 options altogether. In older versions of project, there was just one baseline option and you had several interim plan options, which basically just saved the start and finish dates. So baseline saves the start and finish dates, but also time phase work, costs and resource allocation. So that is all I need to do for this process. As soon as I click OK, baseline column is filled in so it's just at the moment it's just the same as the total cost column now I'm going to put this back to the entry table now what I recommend people do is not use this default Gantt chart while you're updating a project but go on to the tracking Gantt which you can be found down the view bar on the left hand side tracking Gantt and then modify this table to show the tracking table. Now before I do that, I need to bring my tasks back into to view. So on the tracking Gantt, you can see you have a percentage complete as a label and your baseline is shown by this charcoal colored bar. Your actual is the red bar. So I'm just gonna move this across um, just to expose more of the table. So I want to change this table to the tracking table. So I'm going view, tables, tracking. Now, this isn't the only way that you can update a project plan, but it's the way that I teach in my classes and I think it's great. Now we've got actual start and actual finish and actual duration and, and other fields that you can see there. I'm just gonna add um, the baseline start field. So baseline start, so I know when it was planned to be start, and baseline finish, baseline finish, and then baseline duration columns. Baseline duration, like so. So I've got an idea what the actual start date was or finish date was and the duration was, so I can utilize these. I'm just gonna get rid of this column and then I'm ready to go. So the process is, is this. So to update this project, this task, install software room one, I've got several options. Let's say it did start on the 13th, so I can click in there and select the 13th, so it started on time. But its actual finish time was not the 13th, let's say it was the 15th. So as soon as I put that finish date in, the 100% complete is populated and the actual duration has changed to three days from the original baseline duration, which was one day. And that is reflected on the Gantt chart. Now because install software room two is driven by that task, I would update that as well to represent the same. That's 100% complete. So that's one way you can do it. Another way, say test software room two. Um, let's say that, so that is due to start, was due to start on the 15th, but obviously it's following on, was due to start on the 14th, was following on, it is now following on from the 15th, so it can't have started on the 14th. So if I say it started on the 16th, and instead of filling in the finish date, I just go to actual duration, say it was two days instead of, the planned one day you can see that moving along and I'll do the same for this one 
So its actual start was the 16th and it was two days in duration. Now whichever column you fill in effect affects the other column. Um, I'm not a fan of just going down the 100% complete column or starting to put 10%, 20% because it's not really accurate. And if you're always just filling in a, a task as 100%, what we're in effect saying is that your plan duration is always accurate. Whereas if you're doing the actual duration, it's more accurate. Because if it says two days and it was planned to be one day, you've got a problem there. You was uh, a day over and that's got a cost implication. So although that's a quick way of filling in um, the percentage complete it's, it's quick but it's not very accurate and it gives a false result when you're reviewing projects so uh, I would avoid that although it's not undoable but sometimes you have to do it for speed but I would try and avoid that if you can now when we did the baseline I told you you can save multiple baselines so I'm just going to save another baseline just to show you how that process works baseline one the previous one was there click OK so that's took another snapshot in time. And then I'm just going to update one more task um, to show you this one. So let's say this one started on Monday the 20th and it took two days. So that goes 100% complete. But I'm now going to go, there's an estimated two days left. So that's now going to knock that back down to 50%. So it was planned for one day. Um, we did two days, but there's an estimated two days work left. Something's gone wrong on site. And now, before I uh, do the same with the, the remaining tasks, I just want to have a look at this. So on the Format tab, I've got the option to display different baselines. So there's the original baseline, which is displayed. If I click on baseline 1, that's showing you the baseline 1 and the movement from that. Go back to baseline and then same on the slippage baseline that shows you the slippage baseline one there's not much there just that last bit and you can take those off altogether if you want i'll leave that one on now there's also a gantt chart that you can look at which is called multiple baseline gantt which i'm just going to show you view other views and then more views and it's in this list multiple um, baseline Gantt, we've only got two. So there it shows you the baselines. The reason the lines are so thin is because obviously there could be 11 baselines there, but that's very, it's a very good view to see movement across a project. And as all, all Gantt charts, you can add labels on the end of these if you wish. At the top there maybe you might want to add um, what baseline that is. That's baseline one, the red one and the blue one is the original baseline. I'm just going to put, go back to the normal Gantt chart. Um, and in fact, I want to go back to the tracking Gantt. Sorry. Tracking Gantt. Now, while you're running your project, you probably want to run reports. So just have a quick look at some of the reports that you have in project on the reports tab. So you've got these options, dashboard, resources, costs, in progress, and the ability to create your own report. So if I just look at some of the dashboard ones, I'll try a burn down report. That's a burn down report for this particular project. It doesn't give us much information. The project's quite short in time, in terms of time, so it's not showing much information. If I go back to reports and maybe let's have a look at cost overview. So this is telling me that the project is 75% complete. The cost is 3,374. I've got 810 pound still to spend. So actual cost, and then you can see the, the graphs there and what the implication is in terms of cost variance on this one, 920 pound. Another one, let's have a look at resources. Um, resource overview I quite like this one so it basically tells you what work's been done against baseline work so you can see quite clearly there a lot more work has been done or is planned to be done um, as opposed to the baseline and then this is the percentage work complete for each resource 
and then you've got that same information in the table. Now just go back up to reports. Um, costs. Um, so for cash flow. Remaining cost, actual cost. Actual cost work performed. Budget cost work performed. Budget cost work scheduled in this table. So all these reports are great, but I always find it easier to create your own report. Um, so I'm just going to show you how to do that. And once you've created a report, they'll 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 appear in um, in recent or custom, depending when you was last into those. So I'm going new report, and I'm going to start off with a blank report. I'll call it Steve. Click OK to that, and then we get a blank piece of paper basically with the design tab at the top giving us some options. So the first one I'm going to do is give myself a little chart, clustered column will do, and then the default that comes in is this one. So I've got that, now let's get a table from this, get a little table. So that's a table. Now, I might not want all of that, so let's have a look at what I can knock off there. So. I've got options here, so do I need the name? That's the, yeah, so I do need the name. I don't need this start button, so I'm just going to remove the start and finish fields. So now I've just got the title and the percentage complete, and maybe I can just move that, the whole thing, um, across to the other side. And maybe make that a little bit smaller, like so. Move the graph down. And so this graph is looking at tasks. Let's have a look at creating another graph. Same graph, but this time I'm going to change this one to uh, look at the resources. So resources at the top there. So this is all the resources and the hours. Now this is where filters might come in because I've got all resources, but I could filter by group. Um, or create new filters, um, resource work, let's put that one on, so that's filtered just the work resources as opposed to the equipment which probably doesn't make much sense but you've got your your work resources there. These are the three default fields but you have got the option to put um, other fields in there. If I um, come down this list you've got the three ticks there what uh, tick work variance and I'm going to take that work variance one off I don't want that on but basically you go through these options and tick things on or off depending what you want to look at so and then as always with graphs and things you can format those from at the top there to make them pretty and once you've saved this stuff you've got um, a report that you can look at so this tell this tells you all the information that you require I'm just going to click on this graph to change this graph slightly and have a look at level so I'm on level one at the moment if I go all subtasks that shows me everything which is slightly too much information so I'll go back to level one um, I've got active tasks and again I can select all tasks not much difference in there because they've not changed. So groups. I could use critical maybe. Critical yes, critical no. So these are the same sort of things you can put onto tables. I'm just gonna take that off. No group. And you've got the sort option there. Now I'm just gonna create another table at the bottom. And so that's the same information as before. Let me just push that down a bit. But on this one, if I scroll down, I do want to put um, not project summary, all subtasks. So that's going to give me a list of all the tasks. So that's just basically like like your Gantt chart, if you like. Um, and you could add columns in there if you so wish by just ticking the columns on and probably make that slightly wider 
so to accommodate the resource lists. And there you go. And then you can then close this report or save this report. Or I'm just going to go into a different um, view, go onto the Gantt chart. And then if I want to get back to that report, it's in custom. There it is. And this will reflect any changes in the project. If I go back to report, it will also be in recent use. So that's basically um, how to save a baseline and one way to update your tasks and then create reports. And that's the end of this module. Thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed it.